Hello from Kingston. My name is Sandy and I'm here to give you an update on the progress of the bridge construction. Aerosnapper has taken a break this week, so I am filling in for him. I hope you will enjoy the update. We'll start our week with a look at the West End, where bar construction have had grading roadways and installing drainage as two major features. John's grading services delivered a steady supply of fine gravel and conducted the initial basic grading service. Then, with a little water added to lay the dust and assist compaction, it was time for Coco Paving to bring in their own grader and conduct the final grading. And a little more compaction never hurts. Meanwhile, in the East Laydown, Tomlinson returned to receive and install some major vaults and drain pipes. These are all part of an oil grit separation system designed to remove contaminants from stormwater runoff. Out on the bridge itself, a major pour began with the completion of a union between two of the spans. A hydraulic pump has to be used to open the rebar to allow the delivery hose to gain access to the void. Later in the day, concrete delivery would continue to close the gap from a previously poured span. Tuesday would see more drainage work by bar and the cocoa paving grader continue work to prepare the roadways. Over on the east end, Tomlinson broke rocks in the hot sun and packed the first of the major drains in place. Before continuing in the afternoon to stabilize the second vault. On top of the steel span, it came as a slight surprise to see that AMG Metals were already placing the guardrails on the south side. ABF's dedicated iron workers were installing reinforcing rod on span 21. And on Wednesday morning, they could be seen doing just the same on the expansion joint over Pier 6, whilst Kiewit staff considered treatment of the dividing wall. Considerable progress was made, too, on the installation of the guardrails on the steel span. Tomlinson's team spent a very busy day packing and consolidating the drain pipes already installed in the East Laydown and completing a second enormous vault. Work that included capping the vault, and removing the lift tabs from the vault lid. In a live demonstration of just enough just in time, even as the work concluded, a low loader arrived to remove the excavator. Over on the west end, a reorganization of the Kiwit workspace provided a demonstration of the four-wheel steering that the telelifter is capable of. Thursday began on the West End with a clean-out of the washout point used by the ReadyMix trucks. By day's end, Barr had placed a second vault in the area near the West Abutment and would begin to consolidate it. The east side washout area received the same clean-out treatment on Thursday. 
Kiewit's excavator then moved to begin skimming gravel from the east side of the temporary causeway. This was then taken to the east laydown, where in due course it will contribute to raising the level of this whole area. One major development on Thursday was the arrival for the first time of sharp landscaping and construction. After initial briefing and consultation, they lost no time in getting down to work. Friday was bright, hot and sunny, and saw bar continue drainage work close to the west end and the west abutment. The arrival of a steady stream of CBM ready-mix trucks signalled a second major concrete pour of the week. From a relatively modest beginning, the pour would continue throughout the morning to complete by early afternoon a substantial portion of span 16. Concrete was delivered to Pier 6 too, but this was wheelbarrowed down to complete a catchment further down the bridge. The week continued to produce surprises, including the arrival of a barge from Inner Harbour Marine Services. It turned out to be supporting work to lower the overlooks above on the steel span. The week's most highly anticipated activity must surely have been paving on the West End. Surprisingly, the hot conditions were far from ideal for paving, but substantial progress was made during the day. And access, though challenging, was maintained for the neighbours throughout the day. Work on the paving progressed pretty steadily. By day's end, the initial approach lanes were looking pretty good. Over on the east end, gravel was also being moved to prepare for paving at the east abutment. At the intersection of Gore Road and Highway 15, the crew from Sharp Landscaping was already hard at work transforming the area, with the addition of topsoil making a significant difference. Let's go to wildlife this week with a look at the work being done to prepare for the joint between the steel span and the final spans 21 and 22. Well that's it for another week. I'd like to thank Sandy for stepping in on the introduction. I'm sure we all welcome a change of voice and uh, I hope you'll consider subscribing and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>